This is Golf with Jay Delsing. A two-time All-American at UCLA. A participant in nearly 700 PGA Tour events. Seven professional wins to his credit. Over 30 years of professional golf experience. A member of the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. Welcome into the show, everyone. It's Golf with Jay Delsing on a Sunday morning here on 101 ESPN. Coming to you from the Car Shield Studios. It is always presented by Darty Business Solutions. We're going to visit with the partners of Gimme Golf. That's Kyle Walton and also Kenny Riley. And we're going to talk about X Golf, which has arrived here in St. Louis. A couple of great guests coming up. But first, Jay Delsing, always great to see you. Danny Mac, good morning. Here we go again. This is, yeah, this is, this, I can't wait to, to, to have the peeps hear a little bit about Gimme Golf and X Golf. You know, the game of golf around the world is booming, but especially here in the United States. And um, these, a couple of guys with some some different ideas and uh, different technology, and uh, there's just lots of really cool stuff happening in the world of golf today. Danny, we got Anthony Kim coming back. We got a lot of really cool stuff. So I'm going to get into that right away. Also want to remind everybody we're going to talk about the match which was something that took place this last week. It's been an installment on TNT, and we'll get into that. We'll also talk about some of the best ways to get your game ready here in spring. Some good weather here this weekend and this past week in St. Louis. But I want to start with Anthony Kim, 38 years old, 12 years away from tour play, and he returns to golf joining up with Liv. What did you think when you heard the news here? Well, so first of all, I know Anthony pretty well. It's a young guy. He came out on tour, and I got to tell you, he was much must watch TV. Danny, super ballsy, super aggressive, and he had the game to kind of back it up. He was kind of in your face, like Tiger was in your face. Okay, but Anthony, yeah, he played with an edge. He played with an edge, and he was flamboyant. He lived a big life. He made no bones about it. Like, yeah. I'm not going to the gym afterwards. I'm going to go out and have a cocktail, and we're going to go that way with this thing. And um, But it was amazing to watch him and to watch what he's doing. He used to have these big, shiny, uh, diamond-studded belt buckles. It just it, Golf had never seen anything like that That's before, right. especially with someone. You know, Doug Sanders was a crazy dresser with blue shoes and blue socks and yellow and all this other stuff. Um and a really good player. But this, in the modern era, there's there's been nothing like it. And then Danny starts getting hurt, and um, he tore his Achilles tendon and, and damaged his thumb. And he, he's a guy that in his, what, second or third year in the Ryder Cup, took down Sergio Garcia in That's his right. prime five and four and was a stalwart in that team. And he was uh, – it, it was really – there was – you know when Payne Stewart died – we got a good, solid, you know, 15 to 20 years of Payne Stewart, and we wanted more. Anthony Kim was just beginning, and you just didn't know. I mean, Danny, he made 11 birdies at Augusta one year. I mean, just things like that that, that um, really, really caught your eye. You know, there's not that many players that, as a, another player, you're excited to watch. But you know how you and I are with Tiger. We're like – all things Tiger, we love watching. Anthony Kim was that way. I guess the question will be, why did he step away for 12 years? And that'll be the question that if he wants to give the insight into his personal life, whatever the case may be, but why did you step away 12 years in the prime of your career? So he had a, he had a, an insurance policy of at least 10 million bucks that we know of that if he, so his injuries were pretty devastating and, and, and really at the time, from what I understand, we're going to have um, his swing coach, Adam Schreiber, and good friend Adam Schreiber on the show. So Adam can shed some light on this as well. But I guess they really, really took him down and took him to a place where, you know, he had a lot of eggs in his golf basket, and then all of a sudden it was taken away. And now he's trying to figure out, you know, Danny, and whatever his brief career was, he he won over $12 million dollars. And three events and a Ryder Cup, a President's Cup. I mean, he, he he was somebody to watch. And so I know that if 
he did play professional golf again, that con- that that uh, insurance contract would be voided and he'd have to pay back quite a bit of money. So live and I can't believe I'm going to say this, but Liv makes the perfect sense. Absolutely. I mean, because they're going to take care of what he's owed on the back end of that that uh, insurance policy and then also give him an opportunity to play. He's got three rounds of golf. He's no cut. I mean, it's, it, there couldn't be a better way for Eased someone. Eased competition, yeah, ease into it. Exactly. Yep. I don't know if you watch the videos like I did like seven or eight times. I know you did. You know, he's 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 just a brash guy. You know, he's he said, I'm, I'm coming out here to bust people's ass. You know? I like it. I, I mean, personally, too. you know what? We need something to happen in golf that it just catches your attention. Liv is doing their thing. John Rahm still talked about today. On the PGA Tour, you got first and second year players that are making cuts and winning, but no one knows who they are. This really garners your attention. It's tough, Danny. This is a tough time in golf. If Rory's not playing, like last week at the Mexican Open, no offense to Nap. He's a UCLA kid. I yeah. mean, great, great winning the uh, your first PGA Tour event, but... See, that leaderboard looked like a mini tour event. It sure did. How about when you take that much time away? You're talking 12 years. Can you get back to the level to compete, whether it's on live or the PGA Tour? I, I don't know. I mean, the answer is no, not right away. There's got to be a process involved. But you're going to look at a guy that <clears throat> this didn't come out of the blue. He's He's been playing and practicing. I watched his swing. He's, he's got a very unique swing. One of the things that he does that I never could – I'd love to find out why. It's obviously it's for control, but he chokes up so much on every single club. He it's it's not like a half an inch. It's almost like two inches. But he's he's got a very unique swing. It's not nearly as speedy as he was. But I mean that's twelve years ago. Sure. So you 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 go from a twenty four year old kid to a th- you know a thirty six or thirty eight year old kid. I mean it's there's a lot of water under that bridge. I want to go to this again, but right now the PGA Tour first and second year players are winning. How concerned do you think they are with the lack of big names winning, even though they're lesser events, but lack of big names winning on the main stage on national television Saturday and Sundays? I don't know what they think, but they should be. They should be concerned. I mean, we've got, it's almost like there's a vacuum out there, D. Like there's like, what happened? You know, when, Kepka left and DeChambeau left, P. Reed left, and you're like, okay, all right, all right. But, you know, now when you have Rory step away and JT is f- trying to find his game again, Jordan Spieth gets disqualified after, you know, you got just crazy things happen and you're like, who am I to watch? Yeah. You know, in our game is an all, individual game. I know. And Danny, our sport has always thrived with. A dominant player. I mean, you you look at Arnold Palmer carried the water for years and years, and then Jack Nicholas carried the water, and then you had the Tom Watson era, the Lee Trevino. You know, those guys came along. Even the Greg Normans, and then you know Tiger just snatches it from him, and it's Tiger still basically carrying our water. The problem is he doesn't play. Yeah, you know, he's he's said what once a month he's going to play, yeah. if that, if he can hold up. Man, I just don't. I just don't know. So it's a, it's a, it's a really strange time. The game of golf in general, Danny, is booming. We got more people playing. We've got more people enjoying it. We have things like Top Golf. We have things like Gimme Golf. We have things like X Golf. All these things that are bringing people into the game. And we've got the game at its highest level, played by the best players in the world. I don't even know what to, I don't even know what to call it, but it's fractured, it's splintered, and it's all over the place. And I really want to watch Anthony Kim play, but I'm sure as hell not getting up at three twenty five <laughs> and trying to find the CW to go to watch him play on on Friday morning. Yeah, so his first event is in Saudi Arabia. Yep. So be in the middle of the night uh, here in St. Louis. One of the names that we haven't mentioned that is a name that could move the needle, but he's a quiet guy and very businesslike, Scotty Scheffler. He still keeps on putting in these top tens, but you're not hearing a ton from one of the top players in the world, are we? Well, we're not. And Danny, it's one of the things, his putting is killing him. It's literally killing him. He finished dead last in strokes gained at the LA Open, the Genesis LA Open, but still wound up finishing where? I, I mean, it was somewhere. It's another in the, top 10. Yeah. And, and it's just like, what, what, what has happened is it, it makes you wonder, 
because this guy has won the Masters and won how many events now? I mean, he 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 has been world number one for quite a while. John Rahm, if John Rahm was playing and and had the start this spring like he had last spring, then he probably would overtake him as world number one. But that's it. Yeah. I mean, Scotty Scheffler Scheffler is playing such strong, consistent golf, but he needs to start winning and he needs to try to figure out because you're almost look at him stand over that putt and go. What? Yeah. I mean, it's just so it's what's interesting to see, Danny, this what typically happens to a a good player when he's one side of his game is so strong and the other side is so weak that the weak side usually starts funneling into the strong side. And to uh, Scotty's credit. Last year, it didn't at all. And he put on a a hitting exhibition like we'd never seen since the Tiger days. But right now, I mean, you watch him and, you you know, he's miss. It's not like he's missing a bunch of 10-footers, D. He's not making those five-footers and things like that that you'd go, man. So put on your coach's head. You're you're coaching Scotty Scheffler. You're not only swing coach, but you're helping with putting. You're a great short game player, Jay. What what would you tell him? What, what, you know, here, what here, would you try to get him to do? Here's the first thing that I do. I get him on the green. I would love to do this with him, by the way. You know that. I'd get him on the green and I'd get a ball that's striped. And I would have him putt for a while with this ball lined up, not putting in a hole either, D. Not trying to hold any sort of putt. I want you to just stroke the putt, and I want to see how that ball's rolling. I want to get it on some cameras. I want to get some tech on there to see, is that ball being hit correctly? Because I'm not there. If if my eyes were on it, I'd probably be able to see it anyway. But for his benefit as well. Because if it is, then he's the worst green reader in the history (laughs) of modern golf. I'm not kidding you. And so my guess is, D, there's not. Something's off. Something's off. Either the aim, you know, something is just not quite right. And my fear for him is he, he starts breaking this down so much that he loses it completely. You know, and, and if probably start, loses it between the years right now. Yeah, right, right. Well, he's he's extremely unconfident on the green, if, if that's even possible, even though you're world number one and you've run into a series of top tens like nobody we've seen since Tiger Woods. So I want to get you to comment on this. So Luke Donald... And this is interesting. So he's on a roll right now, man. Yeah, he is. Because he wins the Ryder Cup as the captain for the Euro team. But NBC's coverage this weekend, as we've seen, has had a rotation of analysts now the last few weeks. Luke Donald getting a crack at it. it they're trying to be more innovative with what they're doing in the presentation of golf. What, what do you think about that? Do you think it's a good thing? Because sometimes consistency is better than I the agree. rotation. Listen, you're a pro at this stuff. You have done, you know, games in every sport. And so, you know, I... I like it a little more traditional. I, I, you know, when they had Kevin Kisner on the 16th tee and it was cold as hell, I was like, I don't know, man. This, this just doesn't, it just seemed to, it seemed, the coverage seemed disjointed to me. You know what I mean? And I, um, I don't mind them trying new things. I love the new tech. If you can bring new tech in the shot tracer. Love how it. did we ever watch golf Danny, before the shot tracer? It's, Remember they'd follow the ball in the air. I know, but you're like, where is it? Where yeah, is it? Yeah, it could be going over trees <laughs> yeah, over the, the, yeah. the, the, the patrons, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so I love all the new tech. I, um, I'm really anxious to see how Luke does. You know, he's got an accent. That's a huge, huge advantage. Um, And some people would say that's part of the normalcy of that person in that chair. There's no doubt. That's something that they want to hear. No, there's no question about it. I mean, they are not looking for... I throw my hat in the ring. Good. Uh, Yeah, I'm not probably going to hear back from them, but I... You're definitely at a disadvantage if you don't have an accent. There's no question about it. I mean, just look at all the major coverage. Look at the, even the Golf Channel, and it's just it's just it's a non-starter for a lot of things. They got Trevor Immelman, who's a good guy, going to come on the show, working with Jim Nance as the lead analyst for CBS, and they've got his brother Mark out in the field. You know, so you got two. Um, of the uh, South African accents, and then you got Baker Finch, who's obviously an Aussie. You got Dottie Pepper, who is as uh, vanilla white as you and I, and we both love her. She's absolutely fantastic. But it's, and then you got Colt Nost, who sprinkles in a little bit of, you know, crazy cuckoo and, and with, with some fun comments. So, they're all over the place, but accents are, are, are the gateway in. Speaking of announcers, how well do you know Vern Lundquist? I've, I've had the, Severe honor, su- supreme honor 
to have met Vern several times, but I got to sit with him in the Augusta airport as we were waiting for our flights to leave on a, on a Monday and we got delayed, which I thought was fantastic. <laughs> and I just sat there, but he and his wife, he, he's just, you know, when you have that voice, you have that voice. When your voice comes on, it throws me back into the Albert Pujols and all the phenomenal calls you had. But Vern, it throws me back into that. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know, on 17 and then, and then Tiger's fantastic. Have you ever, you know, and, and so, we're going to miss him a lot. I think he's just a gem. Well, I brought it up because this will be, he's said it, this is his final Masters, and it's interesting. You know, certain people are always going to be associated with certain events or certain calls, certain moments, or certain places, and to me, that's Vern Lundquist at, uh, at Augusta. Oh, I, I'm with you, Danny. You know, when we sit around and we do fun stuff off the air, and we talk baseball, and we do base. and John Miller is one of your favorite guys, <laughs> and you imitate him so beautifully, but what's really odd for me is when you get to meet somebody and you have this image of a voice that goes with a body and then you put the body with it and you go, oh. Yeah. You know, because Vern's a short, round guy, great smile, nice guy. John, John Miller's a little like that too. A little bit, yes, yeah. a little bit. Yeah, so it's just it's super fun. We're, we're going to miss Vern. I don't know. You cannot replace Vern. Vern Lundquist to me, Danny, is like Vince Gully. You know what? That that name, that voice, that style is just reminiscent of, of Augusta and can't ever be duplicated. We're going to tip our cap to people always trying to grow the game. And they're our guests today. And that is the partners of Gimme Golf. They're coming up. Also, X Golf. They'll be in our next segment. But we always love to talk and highlight people that are growing the game. And these two groups certainly are doing that. Yes, thank you. Our tip of the cap is brought to you by our friends at the Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood. 314-966-0303. Talk to Colin Burnt over there. He's He's just a fantastic guy and can hook you up with any sort of vehicle. Yep, we're tipping our cap, our cap to Gimme Golf. Kyle, Kenny, they've got almost 500 members over there, and it is super, super fun. It's non-private club-ish. Um, it says, everyone welcome, and uh, it's it's fantastic. And then X-Golf with Drew and Eli and, and their team, is, um, they've got their own specific technology. It's not like anything else you'll ever see or find, and it's really, really interesting. They've got great event space. They've got, um, man, I think he said, or I think I read, Danny, on their website, almost 7,000 square feet in their, their St. Louis location, and then there's one out in Ellisville. So we, our, our, our uh, caps are tipped to both of these guys and their teams for loving the game, for bringing more people, more eyeballs, more butts in the seats, that sort of thing. We really appreciate that. And it's the tip of the cap. It's brought to you by the Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood and our friend Colin Burt. You can reach him at 314-966-0303. All right, X-Golf is coming up, and we're off and running. Our first segment in the books, you're listening to Golf with Jay Delsing. It's every Sunday, 8 to 10, right here on 101 ESPN. was on the range up next we tee it up as we head to the front nine you're listening to golf with jay delsing are you driving an out of warranty car it's only a matter of time before your out of warranty vehicle is in the shop costing you thousands of dollars auto repair costs are up nearly 20 percent from last year which is four times the rate of inflation if an unexpected breakdown happened today would you be ready for that well now you can be with a plan through car shield even if your car is just over three years old, it's still prone to expensive costs. Your car is more than just getting you from point A to point B. Traveling by car is a way of life. From picking up your kids to going to a new restaurant, cars are a daily essential. When you enroll in a car protection plan through CarShield, you can look forward to the following. The price will never go up no matter how many claims you file or no matter how high the mileage on your car increases. CarShield offers protection plans that start as low as $100 per month. That's $100 per month. They have repair coverage for up to 5,000 different parts of your vehicle. Plus, when your car breaks down and you're stuck on the side of the road, you get 24-7 coast-to-coast roadside assistance. You also get complimentary towing and rental car options. 
CarShield has my back when my car breaks down, and they can have yours too. Call CarShield today at 800-465-6550 or visit carshield.com. It's CarShield, proud sponsor of the Golf with Jay Delsing Show. Get ready to watch the legends of golf up close when they compete at historic Norwood Hills Country Club right here in St. Louis. The Ascension Charity Classic will be back again with some of golf's greatest names. Steve Stricker, Padraig Harrington, John Daly, David Duvall, Bernard Longer, Justin Leonard, David Toms, and more will compete returning September 3rd through the 8th. Visit ascensioncharityclassic.com for information. Darty Business Solutions has been enhancing the business of our customers for the last 37 years. How do we do it? Through our expertise in technology, better use of data and analytics, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. We roll up our sleeves and collaborate. We build applications and effectively communicate with our partner clients to bring their goals and objectives to the finish line. Our award-winning Access Point program is a community game changer. With nearly 100 students in the program, mostly young African-American females are making between $55,000 and $60,000 per year right out of high school. That's right, $55,000 to $60,000 a year right after high school graduation. That's when they begin their training. CEO Ron Darty believes the talent is equally distributed, but access to that opportunity is not. So here's Access Point, providing more and more opportunity for those in and around our community. It's Darty Business Solutions. Hi, this is Peter Jacobson, and you're listening to Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm delighted to welcome the Amateur Players Tour to the Golf with Jay Delsing show. The APT team has worked so hard to establish a national golf tour for amateurs. Folks, don't miss out on this opportunity. If you love golf and ever wondered what all the fuss about tournament golf is, then this tour is for you. We just released the 2024 schedule, and it is a beast. There's 21 events currently in the metropolitan St. Louis area with many more to come. But check out these golf courses. Paynes Valley, Ozark National, Stone Wolf, Ambrier, Persimmon Woods, Gateway National, and a 36-hole event on Norwood's West Course, and many more. Okay, so the courses are certainly cool and nice, but what's really neat is the way the events are run and how they are run. The APT team does a fantastic job of closely monitoring handicaps and ensuring a good and fair competition. There are five divisions, a year-long points competition, major championships, elevated events, and much, much more. Right now, there are over 6,000 members in 41 different local chapters across the country. And all that's happened in just over five years. Join now and don't miss out on the best tournament golf in the country. Run for amateurs by amateurs themselves. Go to amateurplayerstour.com. That's amateurplayerstour.com. This is the Front Nine, presented by the Ascension Charity Classic. To learn more, visit ascensioncharityclassic.com. Golf with Jay Delsing rolls on on a Sunday morning here on 101 ESPN. With Jay Delsing, I'm Dan McLaughlin. We're talking X-Golf. We have the owner of X-Golf, which is located here in St. Louis, Drew Weckback. And we also have Eli Scala, who is the general manager of X-Golf. Guys, thanks for coming in. We certainly appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. I so, guys, it. Danny, I'm sorry. I'm going to jump in here. So, I, I I was driving by the other day, and I saw your, your spot in uh, – I, I think you call it the St. Louis location, but it's in Rock Hill. And I said, Eli, I came in and I just talked to you for about, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. Congratulations on the place. Tell us a little bit about what X-Golf is. 
Yeah, we're Exhale for the home of indoor golf, and we really try to bring the best 18-hole indoor golf experience that we can to the marketplace. So you're going to tee off. You can change your tee height. It's going to remember your tee height. Then you're going to hit your approach shot. If you miss your approach shot like I do most of the time, then you're going to chip. Then you're finally going to get on the green, and you're going to putt. And you're going to have all aspects of golf here indoors in a controlled family-friendly environment and have a blast doing it all along the way. So people have simulators. What What's the difference with X-Golf and simulators and some of the places that you see around town? Yeah, I would like to refer to ourselves as the Zoom of indoor golf. You can know everything about it or you can know nothing about it and just see the ball and hit the ball. And if you're a golf, I like see the ball hit ball. Yeah, when it goes straight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and if you're more of the golf nerd, then you can hang out with Eli or I, and we can break down what makes us unique. We operate off of a conjunction of laser cameras and sensors. So when you strike the ball, it's going to know exactly your trajectory. It's going to know your side spin, your back spin, your launch angle, and it's going to have all that calculated in about five to six feet. So you're going to get that real-life interpretation, and it's going to feel just like you're hitting a golf ball outside, as well as some of the more difficult shots that we had in the past, which are those short shots. Yeah, so Drew, you guys have your own tech. This is No one else in town has X-Golf tech, and it's South Korean-based, right? That is correct. So straight out of South Korea, we brought it here to America, which is now known as X-Golf America. And we have our own technology, and like you were saying, some of those short shots where we really shine is on those short chips and putts, where those lasers and cameras are going to be able to pick that ball up very quickly, where some of your more economical simulators just don't have that capability because most people don't want to spend that kind of money just to put it in their basement. So Eli, give us your role with X-Golf. What are you doing? Um, so I'm the general manager at our St. Louis location in Rock Hill. Um, so I see the uh, oversee the day-to-day -day operations, um, anything administrative. Um, I've got a great team of employees there. Um, I see, I mean, we've been open for two months now, so I've seen a lot of uh, faces more than once. We've got a lot of regulars already. Um, we get so many different kinds of people that come in the door. Um, we've got your scratch golfers that come in the door. We've got grandma and grandpa just trying to kill some time with the grandkids. And, you know, we set them up, you know, we set everybody up for success. So I'm kind of there. Um, I'm pretty much the face that most people see when they come in the door. Um, we've got the two locations, but it's just a I mean, our Rock Hill location is a phenomenal community environment. Drew, why is your technology different? And, and when I say why, and then what does that mean for the experience of the golfer that comes through? I'd say our best experience is just the, <clears throat> the overall feel of how it is to play. So, for instance, I can play a round of 18 holes in about a half hour. And that's hitting every shot, putting everything out. That's it, crazy. Yeah, and it's, it's all the little things that you don't think about either. Like we just went over some of the hardware issues of some of our more advanced cameras. But some of the smaller stuff that you don't think about is how fast it allows you to play. For instance, we hit a green button and your ball pops up. And it remembers your tee height. So you don't have to adjust it every single time. Then you hit the ball, it hits the screen, and then it rolls back so you don't have to go run and chase it. And then it collects the ball, brings it back up to you. And by the time I'm, the, my ball lands, I'm already ready for my next shot. So it creates this really fun environment where you're not running around, you don't have to chase it, you don't have to go to the computer and hit eight iron to six iron, you don't have to do any of the stuff to change the camera angle so make sure the ball reads so you don't have the missed shot. It just makes everything simple so you don't have to think about tech, you're just thinking about golf and thinking about how you can hit this pitching wedge within six feet so you get an auto gimme so you don't even have to putt the ball. That's right. what you're thinking about. So the difference between, say, a track man and X-Golf is, from a technical standpoint, it has to do with... Um, uh, what are, what are, you guys are using lasers and TrackMan is basically using GPS, right? Right. So it's using a uh, radar based or Doppler based technology, which is fantastic technology. And TrackMan has a lot of good pros to it. Uh, but we just operate off completely different hardware, our lasers, cameras, and sensors. Uh, so it gives us a little bit of an advantage on some of those uh, short the, shots. The pitching, yeah, the pitching and the chipping when you get to TrackMan just gets wonky. Yeah, it just doesn't have the space to get all of those pings. So it's Doppler based, right? So you hit the ball, it pings, it pings, it pings. You know, that's why it does so awesome. That's why you see everybody in the PGA Tour with a trackman behind him at the driving range. Yeah. Because it works perfect for that. And Trackman has done a fantastic job of not only collecting that data, but giving it back to the user in a usable format. Uh, so it has a lot of good strengths. So, but if you're going to do indoor, then you can take advantage of the fact that we don't have to have, we can have perfect conditions. Trackman doesn't have to have perfect conditions. We do. So it allows us to really hone in on some of those shots that sometimes are more difficult to measure. Eli, someone comes through the doors at uh, X Golf. What are they going to get? Uh, 
At First our, of all, uh, you're damn friendly, man. Yeah. You're, you're at, our, at our St. Louis welcome. location, I'll be totally honest with you. Uh, they're probably getting a bush light. <laughs> <laughs> Go okay. through about 12 cases of those a week. <laughs> so outside the bush light and having a little fun <laughs> with a great. beverage or two, what else are you going to get when you walk through? So, I mean, we're going to get a lot of... Uh, a lot of camaraderie amongst the amongst the boys. That's kind of our most uh, popular group of guys. It's usually, you know, any given Saturday. It's usually going to be four guys coming in. Um, they're all different levels of, you know, of golf that they're playing. You've got, you know, one scratch, one's a 36 handicap, and, you know, everybody's kind of playing on a similar playing field, you know usually set them up for a scramble or something like that. They can get in uh, way more holes that way. And I'm pretty much bouncing around from bay to bay to bay, just kind of, you know, Entertaining, You're wearing a and, lot of different you know, hats. Yeah, kind of, kind of like when you came in, you saw the absolute perfect day of what X golf should look like. Why? What? What was it? That was the uh, that was the winter snowstorm that we got a uh, five couple inches of Fridays ago. Dumping snow, Danny, and yeah. guys were in there smacking stick and putting yeah. and chipping <laughs> they and having a, a place blast. To play. Absolutely, yep. didn't have to work that day, but it didn't keep them from coming to X golf. <laughs> it was it was definitely full too, and and guys. So, uh, Eli, how big is the the facility and uh, it? it Rock, I call it the St. Louis facility in Rock Hill. Uh, what's the square footage? It's about 7,000. Okay. okay. I mean, because I want people to understand, you're not walking in, you're not feeling confined, you're not feeling like, oh man, this place is jammed and, and I can't move in here. You, I, I remember watching at one bay, and how many bays do you have? Do you have? Uh, we have seven in our main area and one private bay. Okay, and which is cool to have a private bay too, but there were, there were a couple of young kids, and I think actually grandparents on one side and then next to them were uh, some other ladies they had their own thing going and then we had guys playing on the other side and some hooting and hollering and maybe a little smack talk it, it was fun absolutely so it's all kinds of ranges of people that you're getting and and so with that are you finding people coming in and, and maybe an instructor bringing a kid for lessons and that kind of thing um, so yeah, we're still in the process of looking for an instructor and, you know, if I'm, if I'm around and, you know, I've got the time, I'm, I'm more than happy to give people some, uh, you know, some swing tips and everything like that. But yeah, there, there are a lot of people who are extremely dedicated, especially during the week who love coming in and spending an hour on the range because we have that full on analysis, um, that you can get every detail of your swing analyzed. It's, it's phenomenal. <laughs> Which technology. is probably way too much for the average guy, but it's exactly. really interesting if you've never had that tech kind of hit you. But what, what came to my mind guys was the events. I mean, what a perfect little corporate, uh, you know, afternoon, I don't know, outing, happy, uh, yeah, happy hour, the, the food, the whole thing. Yeah, we do a number of those different, and we do them differently for different people. So if we have a group of guys that are all coming in that are all serious about golf and there's eight of them, we'll set them up for four 2v2 scrambles. And they can have like a real competition. They may put a little coin on the side. They may have a little fun with it. Or you may have some people that are just here to mingle, have a good time, and maybe we set them up at St. Andrews and see if they can hit a 70-foot putt on one of those massive greens. So we, we try to make it a fun event for everybody. And we even do some really unique things in our off season. So one of the things we do here in St. Louis because we're St. Louis, is we actually host trivia are. nights that have nothing to do with golf. We just simulcast because we have all these screens and the projections and the TVs up. We actually just do trivia. So we'll set up the main six areas for trivia, put the screen on, simulcast it, put the microphones up, and then what we'll run is we'll run some like close to the pin competitions to help these charities like make money in our downtime because we're aware in May that people aren't going to come do indoor golf. Everyone's out enjoying 75 and sunny. What's the uh, technology like with putting that separates your facility from some of the others? It's really just the, the laser. So what happens is if you look at our floorboard, there's going to be two different laser patches. So it's going to measure when your ball crosses the first one and then when it crosses the second one, both from a speed and from a trajectory. So it's going to recreate that really nervous five-foot putt, that swinger that you have outdoors. We're going to have that. We do it at about seven to eight feet, but it's going to have that same pressure putt when you're on 18, you're tied up, you're going to be in our league, and it's for the match, and you got a seven-foot knee bender, and we're going to recreate that stress that you have on the golf Ew. course i've had a lot of those <laughs> i don't know about that so in terms of of money what what's it cost and i'll turn to you eli so somebody walks through the doors they say i'm ready i want to play 18 the cost of of trying to do this or to to join up on some of the special things that you have going on 
Yeah, so um, all of that depends on the day and the time. So Monday Monday through Thursday, um, we open at 10 o'clock. Um, up until 5 o'clock is $40 an hour. Um, we get a lot of our members that come in during those times or just some people on their lunch breaks. Um, five to close is going to be $50 an hour, and then weekends are $60 an hour. So pretty affordable. Yeah, not, not yeah. too shabby. And, I mean, obviously the price doesn't vary, so the more people you bring, the price isn't going to change. What's the response that you get from people that are using this now? Oh, it's the best technology they've ever encountered. Um, Enjoying they, it, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we get we get nothing but the utmost greatest feedback. I mean, I couldn't ask for anything more. Eli, this is the hard thing about about talking golf on, on a radio and then trying to describe the tech. But there there's a big difference between what you guys are doing at X Golf and everybody else's simulators. There just there just is. There's from the difference that Drew mentioned where you set your tee height. And the computer remembers it every time you're going to hit driver. And it also knows when you're going to hit driver, by the way. You know, to where the other stuff, you're chasing the ball down and things like that. I, but the putting thing, D, that you brought up is interesting to me because putting is such a touch and feel uh, sort of thing that's created by your visual stimulus. So th- th- it's challenging for me when I go to, to look, because I watched a family, you know, a little kid was putting and dad's like, it's too hard, son. You know, he just hit it. You know, you had a eight foot putt, you knocked it like 35 feet past the hole. So th- there's some getting used to it, but it makes it fun that you at least get the putt. Yeah, absolutely. Let's, let's ask you this too, because I know a lot of people are curious about this driving or listening at home or wherever they're taking in the show. Uh, you went through the prices, but uh, hours of operation, how to get a hold of you, all those kind of things. Either one of you guys can take that. Eli, go ahead. All right. So, yeah, I mean, we're open seven days a week. Um, open at 10 a.m. Uh, Monday through Friday. We're open till 10 p.m. till Thursday, uh, midnight on weekends. Awesome. Good stuff. And and the best way to look up your website and where to go and sign up. Yeah, the easiest thing is just to search X Golf St. Louis or X Golf Ellisville. Those are both our Central Corridor location and our West County location. We'll pop right on up, and you can book a tee time. And if you want to play on Friday or Saturday during those popular times, I would tell you to book a tee time in advance. Awesome. Thanks for coming in, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate Thank you, you guys. Thanks, Thanks for having us. X Golf here on Golf with Jay Delsing. Jay Delsing, presented by the Ascension Charity Classic. We're halfway home, and next, we'll make the turn. If you're in the market for a newer used vehicle, any maker model, then you need to visit the Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood. They are the official vehicle provider of the Golf with Jay Delsing show. My daughter and I both drive vehicles supplied by Colin and the Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood, and it's because we know we can trust them. They made the car buying experience painless and easy, and their customer service is second to none. Every single step of the car buying experience was taken care of for us. You can reach Colin at 314-966-0303, and he will answer all of your questions and put your mind at ease. The Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood has new or pre-owned vehicles to be purchased or leased, whichever you prefer. Once you visit the Dean Team Volkswagen on Manchester in Kirkwood, you'll be a customer for life because they will treat you like family. The Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood, the official vehicle provider of the Golf with Jay Delsing Show. Hi, this is Adam Best from Family Golf and Learning Center. At FGLC here in Kirkwood, we feature a double-decker driving range, two large grass tees with Tahoma Bermuda grass. You want to work on your short game? We have a short game area too, which features a 20,000 square foot green, three bunkers, and zoysia surrounds. Also at Family Golf and Learning Center, don't forget about our nine-hole par three course, the indoor trackman simulators, and our performance center. If you're looking for the best golf instruction, regardless of skill, we can help. Find out more at FamilyGolfOnline.com. That's FamilyGolfOnline.com. Family Golf and Learning Center. We make St. Louis better at golf. So you've been hearing me talk about one of our community's greatest contributors and most philanthropically inclined companies. Yes, of course, I'm talking about Marcone. They're the largest distributor of General Electric appliance parts in North America. Did you know that Marcone is also the largest and most trusted supplier of commercial and residential appliance parts, HVAC, plumbing, commercial kitchens, and pools and spas. All of that's in North America as well. That's right, Marcone does all that. 
Marcon is committed to supporting our first responders, all the branches of service in our military, our police and firefighters, and many more. From the viewing deck at the Ascension Charity Classic, founded in honor of our military heroes, to their commitment to Reese Across America program, Marcone is here for you and your family, as well as your community. That's Marcone, the official sponsor of the Golf with Jay Delsing Show. This is Chris Nagel. And you're listening to Golf with Jay Delsing. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. We're halfway home and it's time to make the turn. Let's get back to Jay and Dan. Golf with Jay Delsing this Sunday morning rolls on on 101 ESPN. Our thanks to the gang over at X Golf. That's Jay Delsing. I'm Dan McLaughlin coming to you from the Car Shield Studios and as always presented by Darty Business Solutions. All right, Jay, interesting. X Golf and a, a chance for people to not only use a simulator, but a special type techie, if you will, simulator that. It, it really just gets to the nitty-gritty of what you're trying to do. No, it, it, that's a good call, Danny. It, so I followed X-Golf for quite a while. They came over to the States, I'm saying maybe six, seven years ago, something like that, and I was interested in just trying to stay up with them. And so they're a South Korean-based company. They're, they're tech. There is It's uh, proprietary. It's not anything else. I think um, Drew was saying that um, the track man and – uh, the quad pro and things like that use Doppler and they use more lasers, which makes the short game stuff so much better. And, and, and I'll concur. I, I, I like that, that it, the, the, when you're on your track, man, and they set you up and you're playing a simulator and let's say you had a bunker shot, it just doesn't do it justice. You're just not quite sure. I was with your daughter, Avery, at Elevate Golf a couple weeks ago. We were looking at this little shot, and she's like, this is weird. And I said, it is weird. You know, because you say you have 22 yards, and then it just it's not quite what it, it needs to be. And the, the um, X-Golf has, has taken care of that. Now, the putting is a challenge. It takes some getting used to. You got to acclimate yourself to it. But I don't like the auto two putts and the other things. I really don't like the auto two putts. And what I'm really inter- what I was really interested and I brought up to you is on the Tiger Golf League, the simulator league, which unfortunately we got to wait another eight, nine months for. They were going to do something creative with the putting. And I wonder if it's online with some of this X golf technology because Typically, guys, when you go to a simulator and you use the regular trackman type technology, you get on the green and it's an auto two putt, or they'll give you a ratio of what your make percentage is. You know, so let's say if you consistently hit it inside of 10 feet, obviously you're not going to make all of your 10 footers, but they're going to give you, you know, you're going to, you're going to get 0.8 or something mm-hmm. like that. So you're, you wind up sitting there and, and, point something under par, point something over par, as opposed to knowing exactly what, you know, did I make it or did I miss it? Not what the averages are like. I was really curious with the Tiger League if it would uh, if it would take off. I, I wonder if people would just tune in because I can watch Rory. At the time, can I watch John Rahm? Remember, he had signed up for yep. it, and when he kind of said, I'm not going to do it, that was my first indication Same. that maybe yep. he's headed to live. Yep. But you get to see Tiger hit. I, I wonder if people would have been – really engaged into doing that. And, and here's what I'm saying is that a lot of people go to an X golf or go to a simulator place and they play, and then you could see your speed and your flight, uh, your yep. spin rate and all that yep. stuff. And they can relate. Yeah. So I wondered if that would be something that would take off for Tigers league. And I guess we'll find out. Yeah, no. And I think D a lot depends on how they do it because you could put a lot of buzzers and, and bells on this thing and make it really fun to watch, not just Tiger and Rory and their team hitting into a screen, you know? And the other thing is the team concept. You know there's got to be chirping. Got to be. Always. Got to be chirping, right? Yeah. I mean, the guys are going to have to, you know, especially with Tiger. He's got a, he's got a sharp as needle as anyone. So <laughs> I, I, I'm really looking forward to that. Now, I've been to 
an ex golf facility. I went to the St. Louis location, and I got to tell you, folks, it's fantastic. It, it, it you get in there, the vibe is so positive. It's it's got the right kind of energy. I remember walking in. I think I mentioned this. There was a, I think a a couple of grandparents with their grandsons and daughters, and they had balls flying and you know and 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 doing their thing. And then I looked over and I recognized a, a friend was there with his uh, two two boys, and they were playing. They had a little match going and I asked them how the how's the putting in this and they said it's it's fun it takes a, it takes a while to 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 get used to it but it's fun and then I went and hung out with Eli a little bit and man guys are drinking beer and having fun they also have TVs up so you know you got the blues on you've got all sorts of different things on and it's um it's fun you can go there for sheer recreation you can go there and just have a a bachelor party a a, a a happy hour with the with the folks at the office, or you could rent the entire place out and have all sorts of different things going on. You so, and I'd have smack going and games going, maybe a couple dollars on the edge there yes, somewhere we along the line. Of course yeah. we would. Yeah, we would. It'd be fun. All right. So you can email us, jay at jdelsingolf.com. We do have emails coming up later in the show, but I thought this one would be perfect. Let's just do it right now. It's Steve at uh, Belfont Neighbors. Jay, how does... Belfont Neighbors? Come on, man. That's Your near, backyard. I know, right where I grew up. How Here. does a, a simulator replicate, replicate being on the course? He said, just simply, I want to know yeah, how no, this thing works. No, Steve, a great question and leave it to North County. Let's keep this simple. I love it. I love it. But what, what, so what they do is they get out and they GPS the entire area. Okay. And then they, they've got this tech that the uphill, the downhill, the things like that, the views are all relayed to the screen. And what you can do with some of the tech, uh, X golf is a little different, but some of the tech is you can change your perspective. If you move to the right, it'll change the look of the green. If you move to the left, it'll change the look of the green as well. And so, um, what it's basically doing is, um, um, using all of the coordinates, it's mapping out the golf course and then adding color, adding sand traps, adding some of the different conditions and, and the older, the, the newer tech, it's getting better and better and better. And then when you hit the golf shot, Steve, that's the easy part for TrackMan because that's what TrackMan does, right? TrackMan registers your path of your of your club. The face angle, is it open? Is it shut? Is it square? How fast is it going? Then what the ball does, how, how much spin does the ball have? Does it have um, side spin on it? How much? Left or right? It'll show you. At the speed that you hit this ball with this amount of curve, this ball would have hooked or this ball would have sliced X amount. It gives you all that data. And it's interesting, if you play enough, Steve, you'll relate that feel that you just did and created in that swing with the shot, and you and you can try to correct it. So it's interesting. You're a teacher that when you take out your students, you love to basically be on the course. On the course. Feel the feel of a real shot on the course. Unfortunately, not all the time can you go out on the course because it's freezing cold. So I'm assuming that you use TrackMan a lot as a teaching tool as well. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a phenomenal tool. I mean, a lot of kids, Danny, will only get on the, you know, the lesson tee with TrackMan. That's over the top as far as I'm concerned. If the weather's good and we can go out and hit some balls on the range, I don't really need TrackMan. I mean, if you're if if you want to do a practice session and compare it to your last numbers, that's totally fine. But you hit a ball, and I'll tell you if that's good or not. Yeah, I don't need track man, I don't need track man to tell me that's going to play in any league, PGA Tour, LPGA Tour, your men's league on Friday. It's going to. I can tell you, and if if you know how to duplicate what you just did, you're going you're going to be just fine. Danny, I have to say this: a lot of times. You've really got to watch the personalities that get involved with the numbers and things. It's a big black hole for some people because you can get so wrapped up in this that you forget this is a bat ball game. What'd you shoot? Right. Not what it looked like. What'd you shoot? And, and I have seen players absolutely ruin their careers this way. 
No how, question. How does it work when, for at the Ascension Charity Classic, I would walk up and down where guys were hitting balls yeah. on the range, and they had the little... You were geeking out. I loved it. Too. I was yeah. all over the place. I thought it was awesome. I followed you, and then I'd follow other people, and <laughs> then I'd go watch guys hit on the range and just in, in amazement. But they have that little track man behind them or to the right of them, yep. if they were left or right-handed golfer, yep. be on the right side. And then I just saw them right after that look at their watch or look right at their phone. Yep. That's the integration's unbelievable, and TrackMan leads. And and I think um, Drew even mentioned they do a phenomenal job of taking the data and then presenting it back to the golfer, so you can get this stuff integrated on your phone, so that you're not consistent. Before Danny, it was hit and then look down at the 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 screen on the machine and try to decipher everything. Now it'll go right to your phone, right to your watch, right to your coach's iPad. Yeah, and that's the say, other one. Yeah, and that, and that's that's the ideal way. It's just, Danny, it's just getting more and more proficient and more. The systems are just getting better and better, and it, it's 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 super cool, man. I mean, it's super cool. Is it entirely necessary for everybody that loves golf to do this? No, no. Let's let's be honest. But if you're a single digit, hell, you may not even like it if you're a single sure. digit. You just want to play the game and go play, do it. But if you're a guy that likes to kind of nerd out like you and I do and geek out, there's room There's room for that. But just remember, that's not the end. The end is getting the ball in the hole. What did you shoot? My four beats your five, unless you get a shot or two, every day <laughs> of the week. So just remember that, folks. It's, it's fun, but don't get lost in it. Coming up later in the show, the partners of Gimme Golf, that'll be Kyle Walton and also Kenny Riley. Our thanks to the guys at X Golf for stopping in studio. Coming up, more news and notes around the PGA Tour. You're listening to Golf with Jade Elsing. That was Making the Turn. Coming up, we head to the back nine. You're listening to Golf with Jay Delsing. Do you remember the golden rule? I'm sure you do, but just in case it goes like this. Treat people the way that you'd like to be treated. At People's National Bank, that one statement is the cornerstone of what this bank is all about. Locally owned, with 23 locations in Southern Illinois and the metropolitan St. Louis area, People's National Bank parlays a robust menu of commercial or personal banking services you could possibly need with a friendly yet hardworking Midwestern attitude. Maybe you just want to do business with a bank whose entire team lives in the same neighborhoods as we do. If you're like me and doing business with someone you trust is important to you, then People's National Bank is the bank for you. Jason Rantham, local president, is here for you to call and he'll answer any questions you may have. His personal cell is 314-974-2243. You can also find us online at peoplesnationalbank.com. People's National Bank is here for all of your banking needs. For the best in Italian cuisine in St. Louis, look no further than Paul Mano's, located in Chesterfield. It's traditional Italian cooking, and their best ingredient, it's their tradition. It's cooking like Paul's grandmother used to make and like his mother still prepares today. There are no corners cut at Paul Mano's, from greeting you at the door to the pasta you'll share with your family. Paul Mano's is committed to bringing you their very best anytime you share a meal at their place. It's Paul Mano's located in Chesterfield. Powers Insurance and Risk Management is a family-owned local business that's been helping our community for over 200 years. In the always confusing world of insurance, Powers Insurance provides clarity, exceptional service, and the latest in cutting-edge products to deliver the highest quality in property and casualty coverage, as well as strategic planning consultation services. Powers Insurance and Risk Management will partner with you. That's right, they'll partner with you to customize the right coverage for you and your family. Tim Davis, Chief Operating Officer, will personally sit down and talk you through the ins and the outs of your policies. They are experts at helping you control your workplace expenses, helping to guarantee the safety that you and your employees need. You can visit them at powersinsurance.com. That's powersinsurance.com 
for all your insurance needs. Hey, St. Louis, Eddie McVeigh here from Maggie O'Brien's. When you head downtown for a concert or cards or blues game, and now for the St. Louis City soccer game, please come see us at Maggie O'Brien's before and after your event. Take our shuttle to and from or stay in-house and watch your favorite team on our multiple high-def TVs. We look forward to seeing you soon at one of our two locations in Sunset Hills on South Lindbergh or downtown at the corner of Market and 20th Street. Union Station is next to us. Hey, Jay Delsing here, and I know I speak for all of we golfers. We're always looking to try to improve our game. For me, that means I go to one place, and that one place is Pro-Am Golf in Brentwood. Tom DeGrand opened his family business in 1975 with a goal of providing St. Louis with the finest in golf equipment, instruction, and technology. Whether you need a new rangefinder, your first set of clubs, or anything else you can think of, Pro-Am Golf has just what you're looking for. If you're a scratch handicap or you carry a 20 handicap, come visit Pro-Am Golf and inquire about a lesson from Tom DeGrand. He's been fixing golf swings and making St. Louis better at golf for over 40 years. Go get your gear, lessons, or anything golf-related where I go. And that's Pro-Am Golf in Brentwood. You can also visit them online at Pro-Am Golf USA. That's ProAmGolfUSA.com. It's Pro-Am Golf. Proud sponsor of the Golf with Jay Delsing show. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. The Back Nine is presented by Pro-Am Golf. Located in Brentwood. See what Pro-Am Golf can do for you. Coming up a little later in the show, we visit with the partners of Gimme Golf. That's Kyle Walton and Kenny Riley. That's Jay Delsing. I'm Dan McLaughlin. We call this Golf with Jay Delsing every Sunday, 8 to 10 on 101 ESPN. Coming to you from the Car Shield Studios and is always presented by Darty Business Solutions. A simple question. Yeah. The match. Did it become good again this last week? No. You didn't like no. it? I, I loved it. I thought it was I, great. I, I, like, I love the girls. I love the girls' aspect of that. Love Lexi making that bomb for Eagle and $200,000 for... I, I, I did like the, the little closest to the... I like just mixing it up a little bit. I'm a huge Max Homa and Rory fan. I don't know, Danny. It just seemed... I, I don't know. It just didn't have Oh, the, come on. It was I, fun. I, it was fun, but it, I was... I okay. love it when Max Holmes said he wasn't playing well, and he said, people are going to think I don't like charity. I know, I know. <laughs> For he's, people that don't know, the money goes to charity. Right. He's such a good He's such a good dude. I got to tell you what I – might. okay, let me just ask you. Here's where I'm going with this. All right. What was your favorite match? It's oh, obvious. Phil and Tiger. Okay, okay. So Well, you can't match that, I though. know, I know. I, I, I do love the fact I, – I feel like the LPGAers are – ballers and they have so much to bring to the table and i love when when people get to watch them play i mean they're it's just it's it's so good um and rose yang is a, just a she's just a, a up-and-coming star for people that don't know so is max homa rory mcelroy lexi thompson and rose yang so those that yep. group that quartet was out there I did like the female aspect to it. I thought yep. it added to uh, the night. I, I shouldn't. I guess I shouldn't have said no. I I li- I watch golf at every, I was any, say, any opportunity I can. I, it's you'd not watch mini golf. You'd watch putt putt. I know. I know. I just. I felt like. I almost felt like the lights made it. It was super cool, but made it really weird for the players. I, I did too. Yeah. It was some of the shadows I thought were yep. bothering them. It yep. wasn't lit quite as well i thought as others it looked darker right. to me something was off max homa he's usually a straight hitter he fouled some balls off yeah. like in delsing territory like <laughs> the one time i saw him coming out of the you know what it remind me of d was the field of dreams when the guys came out of the cornfield and max he poked his head out of those palm trees i'm like max come back yeah it was it was it was it was it was I mean, they raised a bunch of money for charity. I loved watching the one club challenge. I thought that was, was cool. I thought that was really fun. I don't know. Maybe I was just thrown off a little bit by the lights. It, I love the idea of like, let's do some primetime golf. So I was just going to yeah, ask you that. Do you, do you think that that could happen? So maybe not all four nights of an event, but you put 
the the final round or something. Maybe you start on a Friday, yeah, and you got Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday is prime time. Yeah. Now I understand you're not going to go against football. You're not going to go against certain things that are found it. Find a downtime in television and put it on prime time and put it under the lights. And I mean a main event. Yeah. I'm not I'm not talking the Masters, but I mean a page a PGA Tour stop. Yeah. Something different. Right. To try to get more eyeballs to watch the game. I, I mean I think it'd be fantastic. The only problem that you have, D, is it spectators. You know, yeah. you, you've literally got to light up like 250 acres. The whole thing. Yeah, just light the whole thing up. Like, I'm waiting for somebody to dome the whole thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, so we can play 24-7 anytime we want. But I, I, I think the tour is missing out on that aspect where we're, we're too caught up in some of the older traditions that we have d it's like let's have a little fun like live golf having like a rock show what no but i mean let's let's just find that happy medium and figure out danny you know what it reminds me of i was thinking about this i want to get your opinion we've talked about this for hours and hours off the air i've been in your ear while you're playing golf you're probably like can you just shut up and let me hit this shot well maybe it helps me when you talk (laughs) we go a you think about the aba and then the NBA and, and, and that whole merger. You think about the AFL and the NFL, and then the WHA and the NHL. And somewhere along the line, those guys were on opposite ends of the planet and have all come together. I'm really thinking somewhere on the line, we're going to do this, okay? Oh, we'll I do figure too. it out. Yep. But we're going to take away, Danny, this, bring in the stuff that was meaningful, on a like maybe the team concept is the biggest thing that we're going to pull from them. That for me is. But we're sure as hell not going to pull the shotgun start. Like the ABA colored basketball when I was six years old and watching the St. Louis Spirits and the and Dr. J play, I thought it was super cool. That didn't make it to the NBA no. because it doesn't need to. Also, you're gonna the bottom line is you're gonna get the big names back. Right. You're gonna get the best players in the world right. back. You're gonna have the world golf rankings actually mean something yep. because everybody's involved. Yep. So the 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 depth of the com- of the combination of the two yep. will add to it. You're gonna have a, the flavor of the PGA Tour, and I'm not sure what you bring over from Live. You mentioned the team concept. That would be it for me. The team concept would really mean something if you could explain it well to the average fan. Golf fans will get it. Average fans, it's going to take a like because if you tune into a live telecast, you're like, wait a minute, who's winning what and who's what are the yeah, pairings? No, and, it's all it's it, all over the place. It's it is disjointed, but but Danny, I think it needs to be developed. I mean, live does a horrible job at developing anything. So I want to go back to the match just for a moment. Yeah, why not put this thing at historic venues? Like they've got to be some. I'm not talking about. You're not going to get it at Augusta. But I mean, some of the greatest golf courses in the world try to get and say, look, we're going to do this. No no doubt. We're going to do it at Pebble Beach. Right. We're going to go down and uh, we'll go to Riviera. Yep. You know what I mean? Because you yep. got to be on the West Coast because you need the light. But yep. st- at places like that, uh, the waste management, we could do a bunch of holes that have people around par threes, not just 16, but yep. do it at other, do it on yep. other par threes. Yep. Just try something different. Absolutely. I don't... I. I why not? We're dying for stuff in primetime no sports question right about now. It. Since the NF, Danny, since the NFL's left our life, we're like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do, man? Right. We got. To, I mean, and look at what the NFL's doing. We got a Monday night game, Saturday night, Sunday nights, Thursday nights. I mean, they're trying to spread this thing out because they know. They, they oh get, yeah, they come. They come on, man. It's must watch TV. I, I the thing I love though is seeing the personalities come out. You do find out more about the personalities of the players. Yep. You know, if you're talking about Lexi Thompson or you're talking about Rose, you got Rory, you got Max Homa. You you do see them in a different light, relaxed atmosphere, and all of a sudden, few people out there, if not hundreds, if not thousands, say. Well, I really like that Max Homa guy. I know about Rory, but I'm finding out more about Max Homa. I'm going to follow him. I like him. Absolutely. I mean, and that's the way it goes. And that, I mean, I don't feel like the tour has ever done a good job of exposing some of the other players. Now, what has helped, not my generation, but what has helped is social media. Max Homa is a rock star on Twitter or X, whatever we're calling it these days. And that's, 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 
has made a difference in his brand. He's got his own little following because I, I think what he was doing, Danny, at one time, he's like, send me your golf swing and I'll break That's one. Great. How cool is that? Yeah, that'd be amazing. Yeah, I mean, I do that in a heartbeat. I just am old and don't know how to work X and don't, you know, <laughs> you never think about it. But I think it's just fantastic. Do you think Lexi Thompson could make a cut on the PGA Tour? She's been close in the right in the right in the That's right I mean, conditions, like where, in the right where conditions. and what yep. place and at what the, event at the right conditions. I think so, but I mean, what's what are we gaining by that? Oh, I think you gain a lot. Do you? I do. I think a lot of people would pay attention. I think it would enhance the women's side of things. If I if it could if it would help grow the women's game, you know what I think about the yeah. girls. They they can help more of the folks that are listening to this show and more of the golf enthusiasts than any and than the men's game by far. You don't think if she made a cut and all of a sudden I don't care where she's paired, I don't if she's the last one that made the cut, you don't think that would make a difference? I do. I, I, I think there'd be a lot of people that say, I want to watch her compete. Let's see what this is all about. Well, I, t- I got to tell you, she can play. Yeah, for I mean, sure. Of course, but but she had three brothers, and they were all, I mean, you could tell, she she takes a rip at it, and I'm a huge fan of hers. I, I If it if will help grow their game and help, I thought the match did a phenomenal job of showcasing what some of those young ladies can do. I mean, Rose is a much different player than Lexi. Lexi's a strong bomber. Rose is like, she'll just, she's like a surgeon. You know, she gets her iron game going straight off the tee, put the lights out of it. She could take you down. As a player back in the day, would you have been on social media or would you have stayed away from it? Because it can be good and it can be bad. It can be the good, bad, and ugly. I probably. I guess it would have depend, depended on your sponsors too. Yeah. If you could have highlighted them yeah. through social media and you're going to get a nice check. Yeah. Of course you're going to do it. Yeah, no no doubt no no doubt about it. I think it would have been different D because it would have been presented to us. You know like the PGA Tour now has all of these groups that come out when you first get your card and they explain stuff to you and here's how to do because you know it came along I'm like what is it? My right. daughter's like, no, Dad. You put a hashtag. I'm like, what's a hashtag? <laughs> I didn't know what. To, I, you know, I didn't know what's going. What's the at sign? Or, you know. Yeah. A, anyway, um, but that's what happens. And I mean, nowadays, um, when we had Adam Wainwright on the show a couple of weeks ago, we talked about how important social media was for building up guys' career and getting them known and and, and things like that. So it can be I, good. It can be bad. I I, I would have thought of it differently to me it just seems like if you and i go out and we're going to get a steak and we're going to have whatever i'm not taking a picture of it i'm not telling one soul where we are i'm going to sit there and hang out with you my buddy and we're going to eat and we're going to have a good time and i don't want anybody to come yeah, in, yeah. you know and my, my daughter's like dad take a picture of your food i'm like nah i'm just gonna eat it yeah, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not doing that. I just don't get. You know. Yeah. I don't. I don't have that. I missed out on that gene or something. Well, I think what you could do too is turn off your notifications so that people could not reply to what you put out there, yeah. and just say, "Okay, here I am. Put yep. my stuff out there. Yeah. Take it however you will." Yeah. And that that to me would work. I think the other thing though would be cool to see because I'm I'm one of these guys. When I see Phil Mickelson on social media, I stop and read what he has to say. But he does like little mini lessons on Twitter sometimes that I see or different uh, Instagram or wherever I catch it. And I all of a sudden I click on it, turn up the volume, and I'm watching him give me a quick lesson. I find that awesome. When a guy like Phil Mickelson who's liable to say anything, Danny. Well, that's the other thing. He'll you never tweet know. anything. You never know what he's going to say. And he would talk, you know, when he was trying to work at the for the PIP money for that player involvement program and things like that. And I was like – what is he talking about? You know, he's driving a golf cart around with the P, with the Watermaker Trophy. I loved it. I thought that was fin- fantastic. He, he woke up with it in in his bed the I next know. day. I, I, I thought it was just it. fantastic. I mean, his wife must be like, oh, all right, I, I'm out. But the tour, though, will reward monetarily players yes. for being higher up on their, in, not their engagement, but no, how many but, likes they get or no, just their they, social yep. engagement, I guess, right. is the best way to put it. Right. No, that program has got $100 million bucks in it. And, you know, Tiger's still leading. Uh, uh, every year. Yeah. I mean, all he's got to do is open his bathroom window and he's going to get you know 10 million likes or or how about when he when the plane pulls out of the hangar 
You know, they've got the Tiger plane tracker, and there's another, you know, 5 million people. I mean, sure. good luck with, with all that. Danny, I saw something interesting. It had the top five um, athletes, all-time earners, on and off the course. MJ, number one, at like $3.9 billion. You know number two? Tiger Woods. Oh, I figured it was Tiger. $2.5 billion. Yeah. Yep. Jack and Arnold were in the top four, and then the, the next one was a uh, – is he a race car driver or it was maybe but it a was, soccer player yeah, or a soccer player? I, I want to say it was a soccer player, but it, it's just interesting when you think about that, that person that dominates our game to that level. LeBron of is jet. a billion dollar guy. Yep. LeBron's a billion dollar guy. You think of, there's just, those are general, they, we're, we're so fortunate as lovers of sport, all sport. When we get a guy like that, man, we need to keep him around as long as we can and enjoy him. Absolutely. That's Jay Delsing. I'm Dan McLaughlin coming up uh, in studio. They're just standing outside our studio. They're going to come on in and we'll talk about Gimme Golf, something that you may be interested in as a golfer or maybe your friends or family are golfers. And this is a fun way to do it here in St. Louis. Kyle Walton and Kenny Riley are coming up on Golf with Jay Delsing. Redbird Heating and Cooling sponsors the Veterans Vocational Apprentice Program. Jed Dickinson, a retired Navy man, will teach, mentor, and sign off on educational and mechanical work hours to help you get fully licensed while you work and get paid by the company. What a great way to launch your career as a fully licensed HVAC specialist. Call Redbird Heating and Cooling today at 314-320-9507. That's Redbird Heating and Cooling. This is Paul Lazinger, and you're listening to Golf with Jay Delsing. Hey, this is Jay Delsing for SSM Health Physical Therapy. Our golf program has the same screening techniques and technology as the pros on the PGA Tour use. SSM Health Physical Therapy has the Titleist Performance Institute trained physical therapists that can perform the TPI screening on you as well as use the KVEST 3D motion capture system. Proper posture, alignment, etc. can help you keep your game right down the middle. We have 80 locations in the St. Louis area. Call 800-518-1626 or visit them on the web at SSMPhysicalTherapy.com. Your therapy, our passion. This is Adam Betts from Family Golf and Learning Center located in Kirkwood. Our motto is play your best golf. We have the best instruction for every skill level. Two female instructors along with our eight PGA instructors. We're there for the kids and the adults who are starting to play and trying to refine their game. Family Golf and Learning Center features a double-decker driving range, grass tees, and a short game area, along with indoor simulators and a performance center. That's not all. Don't forget about our back nine, Bar and Grill. Find out how we can help you and your family. Head to FamilyGolfOnline.com. That's FamilyGolfOnline.com. It's Family Golf and Learning Center, where we make St. Louis better at golf. Sunday morning on 101 ESPN. It rolls on. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. That's Jay Delsing. I'm Dan McLaughlin. As always, coming to you from the Car Shield Studios and presented by Darty Business Solutions. We have in studio Kyle Walton and also Kenny Riley, partners of Gimme Golf, which is based right here in St. Louis. And guys, thanks for coming in. We appreciate it. Oh, it's great to be, to be here. Yeah. Let's uh, start with Gimme Golf. And I'll start with you, Kyle. What exactly is Gimme Golf? Uh, that's a loaded question. Oh, um, yeah, tough one to start with, huh? <laughs> but uh, it's, uh, yeah, I would say that in its basic sense, it's a subscription-based model um, for people to have access to affordable golf. Um, at a higher level, it's a golfing community um, that, that is uh, sort of passionate about uh, playing golf, and we, we basically have revenue share deals in place with multiple courses that our members have access to, and then we have clubhouses that have simulators and places to hang and be together and it's sort of like our clubhouse just away from a golf course so kyle first of all the everyone welcome yeah everyone only everyone only <laughs> yeah it's, like it's, that. it's it's just fantastic <laughs> so guys talk about this business model talk about because i grew up as a muni guy mm-hmm. you know we didn't have we we bought a 
membership for the year and played as much as we can. Yeah. And 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 but this this whole concept can just revolutionize the game, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, I think. Uh, yeah, the only thing I'd say about it, and I'll let Kenny uh, have a chat, but I think for us, it's it's actually um, not very innovative. I you know I, I was fortunate enough to go to Scotland in April. And if, you know, played St. Andrews and over on the right side of the 18th green, you have three different uh, clubs. St. Rule Club, St. Andrews Golf Club, which is affiliated with the city, not, yep, not the yep, course. Yep. And you have New Club, right? And all of those cor- all of those clubs have their own bar. They have their own uh, club champion. They have their own community, their own culture. And they play public They play public golf courses. And so for us, that's sort of what that, that idea came from. It's like, hey, like, we can build community and culture. I know what golf pros have to do on a daily basis. Yeah, it's do. a lot. Yeah. Um, why don't we do what we're good at, and then we can point our members at these golf courses and create, you know, monetary benefits and and create ways for them to, to you know for us to give back to public golf, but also do what we're good at, which is build community and culture. Kenny, how would you describe it? Uh yeah, and it kind of hit the hit nail on the head. Uh, uh, Kyle, when he he came to me before the business started and kind of uh, laid out the plan on how to open this up and, and have it be, you know, truly everyone only and uh, blew me away. You know, I kind of grew up playing a different kind of golf uh, here in St. Louis, but uh, playing with Kyle and playing with uh, the, the people that kind of embody this style, um, I have never played better and I've never had more fun on a golf course. But, um, you know, ever since Kyle kind of brought me into the fold, uh, we've just seen more and more people get hooked on this idea of, it's more about the people you're spending the time with outside and less about going out and shooting a score. But, you know, there's there's place for it all. You know what I mean? But um, now with 400, over 450 members, like oh, congratulations we, we just guys. got, you know, we, someone joins and you immediately have uh, 400 new best friends. It's, it's, I, it's unreal. I, I, Kenny, I tell people all the time, this is not about the quality of golf. It's about the quality of people that you get to hang around with. And and when, um, when I started my golf thing, it was a caddy. It was caddying at Norwood, and when when I was privy to conversationally as a you know thirteen year old kid, I had no business being in that room. Don't repeat you know? what you heard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> do as I do, not as I say. That's right. But, um, so for for the people that don't know, we've got a clubhouse in St. Charles. We've got a clubhouse in in Fenton. Correct. Mm-hmm. We've those are places that they're like hang out golf specific hangouts. There's Sims. There's a beverage or two. There's there's barbershop. Yeah, the, the barbershop. Barber there's shop TVs. There's Charles. anything you could think of. And guys, there's tournaments. There's sim leagues. And then, but but what's really cool is that right now you guys have access to over 15 different area golf courses. So wrap all this up. It's just. Super cool. Yeah, it's a. I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot. It is a lot to explain. That's why we uh, tend to just ask people to come in and see us. Um, it's it's the the clubhouse is worth seeing. Um, either one of them, one in Fenton or in St. Charles, and then just trying to really understand what we do. I mean, our members can make tee times at the fifteen courses just like anyone else would, and then when they show up, it's a different price for them. Um, we've negotiated that on the back end. We pay our golf courses twelve months out of the year. So, if there's six inches of snow on the ground, they're still they're still getting a check from us. Well, Kyle, from a golf perspective, though, that's that, that it truly has to for things to work. There has to be this, you know, both sides of the table have to have value. And for you writing a check to these guys in November, December, January, you became a lot of people's really good friend. <laughs> I mean, I think in 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 theory, what what we say is we want them to tolerate us in the summer and yeah. lo- and love us in the winter, yeah. right? I think that's the best way that this works because we do play these golf courses in the summer and we put 9,800 rounds on public golf courses wow. and, and we paid out almost $200,000 this year to public golf courses um, from this revenue share plan. So we're trying to bring value. The golf course is our customer in theory and we need them to like us or this business doesn't work as well. Right? So Kenny, uh, somebody signs up ex- exactly what are they going to get? So you got the two different clubhouses, but also access to 15 different pu- public golf courses throughout the area. Yeah, correct. So basically when a new member signs up, they get an email from Mr. Kyle Walton over here, uh, kind of outlines the ones and twos as far as how to book tee times, both inside and outside. Uh, we have an online community and a Slack channel with about 500 
500 deep right now. Um, basically, it's our town hall. So it's an easy way for us to have direct access. Um, we have uh, the, the T sheet is one of the most used threads in this. Isn't app. it almost like an instant newsletter, though? Two guys, I think, Kyle, you were telling me when we were together that you throw something out there and automatically it's not like, oh, we've got all this lag time where pe- people are bouncing oh, back at you right away. That's the T sheet in general, like, uh, you know, on a day, a nice day or. Uh, vice versa, on a, on a not so great day, uh, people post and you say, "Hey, I got a tea time at uh, you know Crystal Springs Square at noon. Uh, I got three spots open." And what usually ends up happening is that the next two tea times after that, or even before that, that yeah. gets booked, and then there's Sweet. a group of them out there. But uh, the indoor access too. I mean, most of these guys uh, come two, three, four times a week. Uh, because it's their spot. This is their place to hang. This is their clubhouse. So it's pretty neat um, as a new member to kind of walk in and then automatically, you know, be you know introduced uh, to some people and 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 offer to join in on a on a on a game or, or for an hour of sim time. Um, it's a pretty welcoming place. Here, here's the thing that I noticed, D. When I walked in, the vibe is just super accommodating. It's just very chill. You guys had some leagues and stuff going on. I want to get to that in a minute, but let's talk about the different membership options for. So, let's kind of run through that. I think there's five different options for for folks to look at. Yeah, so we have a what we call the clubhouse membership, which is like a, a practice membership that starts off at ninety five bucks uh, per month. You get uh, some free access to the sim time, uh, one hour a week. Um, we have the uh, Clubhouse Plus membership, which basically allows one hour per day of free sim time on the TrackMan simulator. Uh, we get into the green grass access into the network golf courses. Uh, the GGC green grass is 125 a month. Uh, that allows access to all 15 properties. Um, you do have access to both clubhouses. They're reciprocal, so you can, you can go down to either club. Um, moving up from that one would be the max membership. So this is the, you know, the kind of the best value wrapped up into one, um, which is access to the outdoor network and one hour of free sim time every single day. Kyle, Uh, how about the golf courses that you have available for people throughout the summer? Well, throughout the year, but in particular, they're going to play in the summer. So some of the names of the uh, golf courses that the guys uh, and gals have access to. Yeah, this is a, this is like a a quiz. Um, I I got them. I got them right here, bro. We don't, we don't do anything that difficult on this show. There's no way. Yeah. So, I mean, I know our, our, we have our, we have basically courses that are sort of free. Um, and that just means you check in, they get a cart and they get to play. Um, there's a couple courses that are 10 bucks, a couple courses that are 20 bucks. Um, yeah. And so we have, uh, we have Eagle Springs, um, F- golf club of Florissant, uh, Baldwin golf club. You got, uh, you got, Su- um, Sun Valley, you Sun got, Valley. Sugar um, Creek, Sugar Creek down Spencer, South, Spencer T, yep. uh, Rolling Hills, Eagle Springs, St. Peter's, uh, the Orchards, Belk Park, Woodlands, Cloverleaf, Rock Springs. What am I forgetting? Quarry at, yes. at, yeah. Quarry at Crystal, Crystal Springs. Springs. Yeah. And, um, that's yeah. about got it. Yeah. yeah that's, that's somewhere around. <laughs> They're 15. all out there. Yeah. 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 A little bit everywhere. So the, I, I imagine that, uh, having access like that is one of the, the feed, some of the feedback that you get from your members is like, man, we, we get the chance to play. We'll find a place to play. One place may be packed, but we'll go find a place to play. Well, it was one of my favorite questions to ask potential members or, or people that walk in. It's like, where do you play your golf at? And they say all over. And I said, us You're too. You're perfect. Us yeah. too. Yeah. And uh, they, they do kind of, we go through the list and they're like, man, I, I play there all the time. Yeah. I love that course. And it's a, it's a pretty easy uh, conversation to have because they're already playing. They're already doing the math. And for them to be able to be uh, welcomed into a club of like-minded individuals, uh, be able to play the golf courses that they want to play at a, a rate that's even more advantageous for them to play more, um, it's a win-win. Yeah, and it doesn't necessarily mean they don't play golf anywhere else, right? They, they're pretty... They're obviously pretty uh, loyal to the network, but this, you're talking 125 bucks a month, 195 dollars a month. Like we're you're in a, a realm that's you know at least we're, our goal is to make things affordable. Yeah. Um. You know, I think that there's there's you know there's plenty of socioeconomic diversity in the game of golf, and we're trying to make sure that we create something that is available to everybody. We have members at that are members at like Westwood or members at uh, country clubs that yeah. are just like hey like. We love what you're doing. You know, we probably won't play your golf course as much, but we love what's going on here. Here, you know, do this. And we got guys that are like, we had a guy the other day that had a medical emergency. It was like, can you wait to pop my card next week? And it's like, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> like, like yeah. yes, like that's awesome. These like, guys we, play uh, every week. Yeah, we, we want that. You know, we want that energy in, in our space. So, guys, when, when I came in to and visited the St. Charles location, besides the, the fun, you had a, an, a, 
like an event in, inside an event, I guess. You had a guys were playing, there's leagues and there's some smack talk and all this great stuff going on, <laughs> but you had a skins game. And what was interesting, so the sim golf is a blast, but putting is problematic. Correct. Not for you guys. Well, no. yeah, we just kind of took it out of the equation. Um, we call it cartoon golf, and uh, we every winter it, it's it's very it's the place to be through the week at Gimme Golf Club. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, the we have leagues that you know start at six o'clock. Second wave starts at seven o'clock, and then we have an open skins game um, after those leagues are finished. Uh, yes, the and putting, that can be in both clubhouses at the same time. This thing is live. D, it is. Super fun. I'm going to interject. Go ahead. No, dude, you're, that's <laughs> absolutely right. Uh, it's it's wild. You know, we, we get uh, to some pretty crazy pots for indoor cartoon golf, but I tell you what, it brings out a lot of people, and that's great. You know, we want people to see this in a, a uh, in a way that is it's alive when you walk in there. But yeah, for the putting on the simulator, it's kind of a head scratcher. Um, you know, what we've done is. You know, we have a an auto two putt once you get on the green, so we're all really good putters inside. Yeah, I bet. But after or around every single pin, there's an eight foot gimme circle. And what we've done is, if you get inside that gimme circle, it'll give you a readout. Um, and we actually have eight feet struck out on our. Green. You get a green inside the clubhouse. You walk in, and they'll say, "Hey, hey, hey! Kenny's got this putt for an eagle to win a skin." And Everybody stops. <laughs> everybody stops. And gets it. around yeah. there, and we had a guy hit one in there like four feet. Yeah, and everybody stopped. That was great. He, he turned. He turned. He turned around. A little he pressure. He turned around, saw Jay, and was like, "Hey, Jay, it's, it's a pleasure meeting you. I listen to you all the time." You were like, "Oh, great." I was like, "Hey, let's watch you make a four footer in front of Jay now." <laughs> yeah, totally uh, missed it. I didn't, I didn't, uh, I, you got the shaky knees. Totally it missed so, it. So it was so good, but this this energy in this clubhouse was so much fun because you can get a putt. What? Up to 30 feet? Yeah, it's is like it 20, 20, 20 foot footer. Yeah. yeah, 20 foot, yeah. yeah. So an end-to-end -end from that is, a, is an eligible eagle putt. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we have eight feet struck out. So if you get your five footer, and the rule is is that you everybody has to be off the green, but that's pretty much the only rule. So you can say and do whatever you want for this person while they're putting and during the putt. And <laughs> yeah, there's a lot is, of good trash This is dog. like you and I, the way we grew up on <laughs> North and South County. You remember, it down you. At, you were at Tower T, and I was over at Norwood. There was, it was oh, not Quiet, going please. everywhere. There was yeah. there was games going on. Mm -hmm. Tower T had the lights yeah. partially there on the the putting green. So yeah. the, there may or may not have been a few games going on with that. <laughs> I mean, that. there was money flying all over the place. So it was a lot of fun. Our guests are Cal Walton and Kenny Riley, partners of Gimme Golf Club. And uh, I, I want to talk about the facilities just for a moment. So you got two facilities. How big are they? And again, how many bays do you have? And then what is in there? You you got a bar. You got a restaurant. You got food. You got all kinds of things going on. So it truly is kind of like a party once you go in there. Yeah, absolutely. So the St. Charles house is the uh, the first house that we built. We kind of uh, grew the business out of that. Uh, just under 6,000 square feet, uh, three track man simulators, single char single chair barber shop. Um, we do have a uh, barber shop. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. The humble barber. He's fantastic. How the hell did you get a barber shop in a it's golf so facility? Cool. I tell you what, man, it's uh, it's the best waiting room in the yeah, world. Yeah, I was going to say, that, listen, if you're going to go get a haircut, you got to wait for a few minutes. Where else would you rather be? Plus, you know what none of us do anymore is need our shoes shine. But if you had somebody, <laughs> yeah. you know, because we all are wearing, Here you know, kicks it. or whatever. But, yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, so as you walk through, uh, you know, it's a kind of a shotgun uh, building. We, we we have the longest uh, brick run on Fifth Street at about 138 feet. So people just go, oh, my gosh, there's, there's more. There keeps going back um exciting spot for us is we are about ready to open a uh a tap room so uh a north county staple cuginos uh the owners are uh claiming that spot as a home and we are about ready to uh to unveil some some really good uh, beverages some of the best whiskey uh, uh you know availability here in the state so we got a lot of plans here um we're, we're phase two of the construction as far as making our, our patio accessible outside, getting some food options, so really exciting stuff. Uh, the South House is located off of uh, basically Ruder Road, 270, and, and Soccer Park, right right next to the, the Fabic building back there. But uh, Fenton Industrial Park, beautiful spot. Um, Kenny uh, Hendrickson and Megan Hendrickson are business partners in that. Uh, they own and operate that South House. But uh, they took a lot of familiarity of the, uh, the St. Charles House and, and kind of did it at 2.0. Um, it's, it's absolutely beautiful in there. Yeah, there's and folks, there's all sorts of things going on here. We had a little pizza drop off when I was with you guys over there. There's, you've got some, some clubs 
things going in the back with a little repair. You can order some things. Yeah. There's what about a- lessons? You got lessons going on back there? We too? do have a couple of instructors that work alongside with the club. Um, I think a couple of talks with even more so to kind of expand that. Um, yeah, uh, lessons are available as Jay was leading to. Um, yeah, anything from, from custom, anything to, to new, pre-owned, all that stuff. <clears throat> It's kind of my love language. They uh, call Kenny that. the arms dealer. I did earn that. <laughs> He's the Absolutely. arms dealer. I love that. <laughs> if, I, if I can't get it, it can't be got. You know? I love that. I very love cool. that. Yeah, that's very cool. Guys, one of the things that we're trying to do on the show is to grow the game. And this, um, we're heavy in the pro game and, and for the men and women and stuff. But from the local standpoint, we just covered the high school boys um, last week. The UHY does a... A Kicking series, off their spring season, season, yeah. Series with us, so we're doing a little preview. But growing the game here, we, we've got to – how do people get in touch with you and how um, – what are the plans in terms of are there more clubhouses coming? Obviously, golf courses are – are uh, welcome any time, right? Yeah. But but the, what what's the, what's the future look like? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, we we have been approached by, I'd say, five to ten different people – about opening up uh, more clubhouses. And I think uh, the best way I could put it is is we're not going to say yes to all of them and we're not going to say no to all of them. So um, we're talking with people, trying to make sense of it, try to see what makes sense, where makes the most sense, and, and how we go about it uh, intelligently. Um, you know, this is sort of a bootstrap business. Uh, you know, we've done this all on our own, and we've tried to, you know, have slow growth be somewhat intentional. Um, you're, and just, so you're sitting down with two bootstrappers right here. <laughs> yeah, we, we're, we hustle a little bit. We're yeah, hustlers. Absolutely. Yeah, love yeah, that. We love, love, love that. it. Yeah, so no. Yeah, so, we, yeah, memberships are definitely available. We're, we're definitely taking members. Um, we, you know, we typically, our, our contracts with golf courses run from March 1 to March 1. Um, so a lot of the, like, the five new courses that we just had are going to kick on on, on Friday. Um, which will will basically open up you know five more courses to to our membership. So what's the best way to find out, look up, contact you guys, whatever they need, whatever answer yeah. that they're the look, they're looking yeah, so, for out there? I mean, what's the best yeah, way to do info it? Info at gimmegolfclub.com is an email that we'll get and we can answer any questions. Uh, anyone's first experience at a clubhouse is on the house. You guys want to come through? We'll give you an hour on the sim. Bring a couple buddies. Got to check um, it out. Folks. Yeah, it's it's just one of those things that you just need to see to to really understand. Honestly, if, if you just like golf, like. You just need to see it, I think. You know, I think what we're doing here is fairly innovative in the space, and I think it's would worth anybody that, that enjoys the game of golf to come by and see us. So info, give me golf, give me golf club.com is our website, um, at Gimme Golf Club on any of the socials. Guys, lastly, where did the name come from? I mean, obviously, we know what Gimme, but were there others kicked around? Uh, I mean, there was a handful of them. I, I think most of them uh, were more towards, like, good golf right yeah. like you know like we, t- we yeah. toyed with like scratch and a couple different things but i think ultimately um url availability and this idea of like give me golf and give me golf like just made the most sense hey guys thanks for coming in oh it's should be a fun summer Appreciate for you guys and thanks for what you're doing in the st louis community too thanks so much you got it kyle walton and kenny riley partners of gimme golf we'll be back with more on golf with jay delsing in just a moment I'm delighted to welcome the Amateur Players Tour to the Golf with Jay Delsing show. The APT team has worked so hard to establish a national golf tour for amateurs. Folks, don't miss out on this opportunity. If you love golf and ever wondered what all the fuss about tournament golf is, then this tour is for you. We just released the 2024 schedule and it is a beast. There's 21 events currently in the metropolitan st louis area with many more to come but check out these golf courses paynes valley ozark national stone wolf ambrier persimmon woods gateway national and a 36 hole event on norwood's west course and many more okay so the courses are certainly cool and nice but what's really neat is the way the events are run and how they are run the apt team does a fantastic job of closely monitoring handicaps and ensuring a good and fair competition. There are five divisions, a year-long points competition, major championships, elevated events, and much, much more. Right now, there are over 6,000 members in 41 different local chapters across the country. And all that's happened in just over five years. Join now and don't miss out on the best tournament golf in the country. Run for amateurs, 
by amateurs themselves. Go to amateurplayerstour.com. That's amateurplayerstour.com. Get ready to watch the legends of golf up close when they compete at historic Norwood Hills Country Club right here in St. Louis. The Ascension Charity Classic will be back again with some of golf's biggest names. Steve Stricker, Padre Harrington, John Daly, David Duvall, Bernard Longer, Ernie Els, and more will return September 3rd through the 8th at Norwood Hills. All tournament proceeds go to area charities serving North St. Louis County youth and families. Sponsorship opportunities, pro-am foursomes, and more information available for you at ascensioncharityclassic.com. Are you driving an out-of-warranty car? It's only a matter of time before your out-of-warranty vehicle is in the shop costing you thousands of dollars. Auto repair costs are up nearly 20% from last year, which is four times the rate of inflation. If an unexpected breakdown happened today, would you be ready for that? Well, now you can be with a plan through CarShield. Even if your car is just over three years old, it's still prone to expensive costs. Your car is more than just getting you from point A to point B. Traveling by car is a way of life. From picking up your kids to going to a new restaurant, cars are a daily essential. When you enroll in a car protection plan through CarShield, you can look forward to the following. The price will never go up no matter how many claims you file or no matter how high the mileage on your car increases. CarShield offers protection plans that start as low as $100 per month. That's $100 per month. They have repair coverage for up to 5,000 different parts of your vehicle. Plus, when your car breaks down and you're stuck on the side of the road, you get 24-7 coast-to-coast roadside assistance. You also get complimentary towing and rental car options. CarShield has my back when my car breaks down, and they can have yours too. Call CarShield today at 800 465 6550 or visit carshield.com. It's CarShield, proud sponsor of the Golf with Jay Delsing Show. You're listening to Golf with Jay Delsing. To connect with Jay, log on to jdelsinggolf.com. You'll see the latest in equipment, find the latest innovations in golf, and get tips from a PGA professional. That's jdelsinggolf.com. Darty Business Solutions has been enhancing the business of our customers for the last 37 years. How do we do it? Through our expertise in technology, better use of data and analytics, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. We roll up our sleeves and collaborate. We build applications and effectively communicate with our partner clients to bring their goals and objectives to the finish line. Our award-winning Access Point program is a community game changer. With nearly 100 students in the program, mostly young African-American females are making between $55,000 and $60,000 per year right out of high school. That's right, $55,000 to $60,000 a year right after high school graduation. That's when they begin their training. CEO Ron Darty believes the talent is equally distributed, but access to that opportunity is not. So here's Access Point, providing more and more opportunity for those in and around our community. It's Darty Business Solutions. Family Golf and Learning Center. No matter your age or skill level, Family Golf and Learning Center, located in Kirkwood, has something for you. They've got it all. PGA and LPGA instruction, double-decker driving range, par-3 golf course, trackman simulators, a large short-game green design to help you with all your shots around the green, bunkers, rough, and Zoysia fairway pitching. And now open the Tahoma Bermuda Grass Tees, the best turf to hit from in St. Louis. It's all at Family Golf and Learning Center. To schedule a lesson or to find out more, visit FamilyGolfOnline.com. That's FamilyGolfOnline.com. Family Golf and Learning Center. We make St. Louis better at golf. Hey, Jay Delsing here, and I know I speak for all of we golfers. We're always looking to try to improve our game. For me, that means I go to one place, and that one place is Pro-Am Golf in Brentwood. Tom DeGrand opened his family business in 1975 with a goal of providing St. Louis with the finest in golf equipment, instruction, and technology. Whether you need a new rangefinder, your first set of clubs, or anything else you can think of, 
Pro-Am Golf has just what you're looking for. If you're a scratch handicap or you carry a 20 handicap, come visit Pro-Am Golf and inquire about a lesson from Tom DeGram. He's been fixing golf swings and making St. Louis better at golf for over 40 years. Go get your gear, lessons, or anything golf-related where I go. And that's Pro-Am Golf in Brentwood. You can also visit them online at Pro-Am Golf USA. That's ProAmGolfUSA.com. It's Pro-Am Golf. Proud sponsor of the Golf with Jay Delson Show. Hey, St. Louis. Eddie McVeigh here from Maggie O'Brien's. When you head downtown for a concert or cards or blues game, and now for the St. Louis City soccer game, please come see us at Maggie O'Brien's before and after your event. Take our shuttle to and from or stay in-house and watch your favorite team on our multiple high-def TVs. We look forward to seeing you soon at one of our two locations in Sunset Hills on South Lindbergh or downtown at the corner of Market and 20th Street. Union Station is next to us. Hello, friends. This is Jim Nance, and you are listening to Golf with my friend, Jay Delson. Down the stretch on Golf with Jay Delsing from the Car Shield Studios, presented by Darty Business Solutions. With Jay Delsing, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Again, our thanks to Kyle Walton and Kenny Riley, partners of Gimme Golf here in St. Louis, for stopping on by. Love the concept, and I'm sure that uh, golfers that are associated with this, they've got a large membership, they probably love it too. Oh, they've got to love it. Plus, these guys just have a cool vibe. Danny, I went to the to the St. Charles Clubhouse. I'm like, I got to see what's going on with here. Because, folks, if you look up gimmegolf.com, their their picks are look like something that you'd have at your family reunion. You know, that's just it's it's well done, but it's not like over the top. You know, uh, all tricked out and everything. It's a bunch of guys. Uh, having fun, drinking a beer, playing golf, giving her boys a hard time while they're trying to shake down a three-footer. And um, the thing that I just love, you know, this is the way that you and I grew up. We grew up on the Muni side. We did not know what the inside of a country club looked like. And it's good. Well, I liked how he talked about camaraderie. Yep. So if you don't know somebody, we're going to pair you with somebody that you don't know. Go shake their hand. Hi, I'm Joe. Oh, I'm Tom. Okay, hey, let's go play nine holes. Let's go have a little fun, and then I'll meet you back at the the clubhouse with our other people that are there. And so you get a group because it can be intimidating. You think about playing golf, and if you don't know anybody, you're worried about your game. You're worried about how you look in terms of your swing. All those things come to mind. It can be an intimidating game. No, there's no question. And what's what what's super intimidating when you start, Danny, is that you're not good. And that, what I mean by that is if you're an athlete, and you and I pick up a tennis racket, we're going to be able to hit the ball back and forth a little bit. I mean, we're not going to be great, but we're going to be able to put the racket on the ball and get it over the over the net and go back and forth. That's not the case in golf. It's such an unusual game. Side on game, you've, you're bent over. You've got your body on one plane. You've got your arms hanging from different. Your arms want to break up and fly all over the place. You're it's, describing my swing right now. I go, right? So I I go, nice that. shot, Danny. Yeah. Anyway, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's difficult. And it that's the most intimidating part. Nobody likes to not be at least slightly proficient at something. And then when you're around somebody else who is really good, and you're also in this you know uncomfortable environment, well, these guys have taken, taken care of that. Yeah. And, and I mean, I like that. Just, I, I, lo- I love that. I mean, they're drinking Bush Light, you know, God bless them. And I, I got to tell you, going over there and watching this live skin game go on for the South Clubhouse and the St. Charles Clubhouse and then having a guy stand over, you know, there's so much going on. There's all the Sims out there. Guys are talking. There's games going on. And then all of a sudden, whoa, 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 you know. Joe over here's got a putt, you know, for Eagle. And everybody's like, oh, you know, so <laughs> right. they all come over. They measure it out, Danny. So it's like if it's an eight-footer, you get an eight. And then it's like 
best luck for you, yeah, buddy. Yeah, no kidding. And, yeah, and and um, I saw one guy, one fell missed a short, shortish putt, but another guy stepped up there and knocked a twenty footer right in the heart, and I was like. That's fab. How about That's really, uh, really awesome? One of our great sponsors is SSM Healthcare, and Brad Henderson is our buddy. And Brad was in studio a couple weeks ago, and I know they have a really important uh, charitable event coming up. And Jay, you wanted to mention it here on Golf with Jay Delsing. Yes, absolutely. And we appreciate Shortcut. We appreciate SSM for all the support. It's the tenth annual SSM uh, Health Physical Therapy Run for the Mission. Uh, Colton's cause it's 2024. It's down at Creefcore Lake. You can um, reach out to those guys and sign up. Heck, you can just go out online like I did, and um, it's it's right there. It's um, April 20th. The race starts at 8:30 in the morning. It's over at, and like I said, at Creefcore Lake down in Maryland Heights. And um, yeah, get out there, get some exercise, raise some money for a great cause. Let's jump into some of the emails, and this is Mike from South County. And again, if you'd like to email us, j at jdelsinggolf.com, j at jdelsinggolf.com. Spring, Jay, what is the hardest part of your game to get back? Oh, man. For me, Mike, it's the um, – it's my short – it's my short pitches. It's my – from from 10 yards – to 50 yards, I'll, I'll hit one really well, and then I'll get, I won't even get the next one on the green. You know, I just don't have that sense. It, it comes back pretty quickly, but for me, it takes, you know, three or four or five days of really good reps, but I need the warmth. I like, I need my hands feeling nice and not cold. You hate playing in the cold. I don't, I have turned into stand. such now, a baby. I don't know many people that do like playing in the cold. The diehards yeah. will go out there, but my yeah. man, Jay Delsing. No. He ain't going out there. No, sir. You asked me a couple times, and then I looked at your text, and I started la- laughing. I said, no matter what you call me, I'm not going out there. But, oh, man, some of the times, if this were when we were younger, oh, boy. I mean, I we if it was around 50. You're out playing. Oh, 100%. Well, that's what the boys in the spring high school season, and I had a lot of great compliments with your visits, especially with the kids from SLU, heard from their AD saying, I really enjoyed the UHY prep series. Thanks for putting our kids on. Um, That's what they deal with right now. Baseball is in the spring for high school kids. It's a tough time, man. It's a tough time to play in these sports where you got bat on ball, and all of a sudden you you get those zingers, oh, man. They oh, they hurt. Oh, Danny, you hit that you hit that four iron off, of, you know, a, a half a groove low, and it just sends that shockwave up all the way through your neck. I was just talking to my buddy Hank Miller and his son Jack is a junior at um, Parkway West, and they were out playing the other day, and I said, "Not on Tuesday," and he goes, "Oh yeah." They were playing on Tuesday, and he jack shot, I think, like a 42. And I said, the wind was blowing at yeah. least 42. Right. You know, the wind was blowing. And he, he said, yeah. And um, so the boys are out there. I know Luke, your son, is is going to lead the uh, the Priory. What's the Priory? Rebels. The Rebels. The Priory Rebels. And um, um, we've got um, Bubba Chapman with uh, the Chaminade guys. And then we got the two fellas down at SLU. We've also got um, Harper. Uh, it's playing a lot of good golf at CBC. So we got a lot of kids to watch it. And uh, the UHY uh, prep profile series is super, super fun. A lot of fun. Susie and Kirkwood, bad habits, Jay, over the winter to be aware of that you can pick oh, up. Oh, boy. Where do we start? Well, I think I think the biggest thing, Susie, is watch your expectations when you come back. Just ease into it a little bit. It's not human nature. It's not my nature at all. I don't know how to really do that well. But the golf is tough here in the spring. It's the toughest time of year to play. The courses aren't very good. The rough has not been cut for months and months. And, Danny, if you go out and play – just pick a number, a 6,000-yard golf course. It plays 6,000 yards. Sure. It's not what not we're get used to. Carry. No, you, yeah. The, first of all, the ball doesn't carry to your point. Second of all, it doesn't roll because we've, you know, we've, we just had five inches of snow last week. It's, it makes it tough, doesn't it? <laughs> it makes so, it really tough. You bring up a great point. Do you club down usually Absolutely. in the spring? Absolutely. Take one extra club. Listen, folks, it's never a bad idea, period. If you're ever in between clubs, take one more. Take one more. It just gives you, 
I, I think I told you the story, Danny, but I was watching over the years and years. I played thousands of pro amps, and I bet you four times in all those all those years did a, did an amateur player hit his ball past hole high. It's okay if it goes, you know, 10, four steps past feet. hole. It's yeah. o- it's okay. You can putt back where you know back towards the hole, and it just doesn't happen because most of the time the amps have an idea in their head. They've got a hundred and fifty yard shot. It's a maxed out one out of twelve eight iron shot and maybe it's a one out of 12 and you pull it off but for the most part that thing comes up short right or left can you get in bad habits hitting off mats oh yeah absolutely yeah. it seems like a lot of people you get the heated bays yep. and, which is great you're yep. swinging the club when it's so cold out but you can get in some bad habits i would assume you absolutely can danny and that's why stick to your stick to your hybrids stick to your 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 fairway woods maybe a fairway metal and a and a and a driver you can hit some short shots just don't not not too many the 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 mats are listen they're a hundred percent better than they ever have been so the tech is better but it's still there's still a lot of bounce factor that works in there you can hit a lot of shots fat look up and the ball will still fly and so we we want to not yeah that's when you get and, and the reason i'm saying this is that it is a massively stark difference than when you go out on the grass as soon as you get to the grass and hit that thing a little heavy like that the ball goes 12 feet in front of you Sure. You know what I mean? So that's, that's what I'm talking about. So you just be mindful of that. But you're getting your swings in. Don't get too tied up to wh- where the ball's going. Work more on your longer stuff. And then once the weather gets good, get right out to the short game area. This is Tom in North County. He says, Jay, huge fan of the show. Just tell me what your favorite club to hit. What is it? I love my 58 and a half degree wedge. It's a, it's a Volky. Uh, it's a, I got a little custom grind. It's not a huge. It's like some of the guys go crazy with some of the heel and toe grinding and things. I've got just a little bit of the heel ground off and um, and a little bit of toe weighting. But I I just I love hitting it. I I love practicing with it. And I wasn't like that when I was a kid because I was just not very good with it. But I've gotten really good with it. I can hit it really super low in spins. I can hit high soft ones. And so that's my favorite club. Yeah. All right, Mary in South City love the visit that you guys had earlier or at least the talk about the match why do you think jay that women look so technically sound when they play the game of golf well i think i think they actually are okay mary i really actually think they are i said for and i would say first and foremost the women are not overly concerned with speed like the men are only not only majority speaking are concerned with speed men's game is about speed the women's game it's not it's it is not and you see the south koreans in particular now nelly Corder is my favorite player to watch i love watching her but i gotta tell you i also love watching lydia ko you've got opposite ends of the spectrum there lydia ko's five foot tall um Nellie's six foot tall. Nellie looks like she was born to swing the club. Lydia, they just take a take a, a poor apart the golf courses so differently. But Danny, there's so many just seriously technically sound golf swings out there. And and they're swinging at a speed that's relatable. You know, when you start looking at the men get that 180 ball speed, that's not relatable. So you can't there's you don't you don't just you know, there's nobody at the club that can do that. But watch those women, and they'll show you. They're working on their form, their work, their rhythm, the rhythm of their golf swing. Danny, if you pick out anything, watch the rhythm of the of the women's golf swing. It it just doesn't get off that often. This is from Dan in the studios of ESPN and 101. <laughs> so this is from me. Are there training devices that you like to use? I'm not talking about yeah. looking like tin cup here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah on the range. Yeah, yeah. But are there training devices that you like? That's a great question because next Thank week you. we're going to get you know, we're going to way to go, Dan. Thank we're going to get um Jim Hackenberg in. He is the creator of the Orange Whip. Folks, if you don't know what the Orange Whip is, I'm sure you've seen him at the golf club or at the driving range somewhere. See him all the time. Someone's got a little orange ball sticking out of their bag. Folks, that's called the Orange Whip. It's got a very flexible, flimsy shaft that helps you figure out how to load the head and create... um, Oh gosh, what do I, I don't want to call it drag. I want lag. I want to call it lag in the golf swing so that your hands get through the ball 
uh, ahead of the club head and create a little more pop, a little more speed, a little more power. It also can help you figure out how to flight your ball, how to hit it higher, how to hit it lower. It's really interesting. Jim is a cool guy. He played college golf. He's a golf fanatic, and he's got a He's an inventor. He's got a lot of really cool things. Um, So we're going to get to talk with him next week. But the Orange Whip, Danny, has what – it's just a great way to – your first couple swings of the day, it almost makes me feel – like back in the day, swinging like either Ben Hogan or Jimmy Demerit or Gene Saracen. It really does because the shafts, back then we didn't have all that tech. And some of those guys that I was mentioning were still playing with hickory shafted clubs, not Hogan and those guys, but we still didn't have the tech. And the, and the shafts weren't built like they are today, and so they had so much more flex. And the ball, consequently, Danny, because we, we were playing that ballada ball, the, sh- the flex in the, in the shaft and the cur- the ball just curved like crazy. It absolutely curved like crazy. So the orange whip is is definitely my, my favorite trainer. Very quickly, is there another item that you like that you would you know endorse that you say yeah, this is something that's pretty good. Very, again, pretty quickly. Here. Yeah, Danny, the, I love the, put- the putting arc. And there's a couple of other putting devices. I'll come back next week with those. But the putting arc, I have one of those. It's really, really good. They have a large one and a tiny one that's only about a foot long that fits in your bag. But it's really, really awesome to help you work on not only the face rotation, but the path of your stroke and simplifies putting a lot. I want to thank the guys at X Golf also, Kyle Walton and Kenny Riley from Gimme Golf. This has been a great show. Always fun to be with you, Jay. Danny, love you. Love doing the show with you. Guys, thanks so much for coming in. Hit it straight, St. Louis. This is Jay Delsing. My show, Golf with Jay Delsing, can be heard every Sunday morning from 8 to 10 right here on 101 ESPN. And as always, it's brought to you by Darty Business Solutions. Tune in for the latest from the PGA Tour, the LPGA Tour, our local golf scene, and much, much more. That's Golf with Jay Delsing, featuring the biggest names in golf, every Sunday morning from 8 to 10 on 101 ESPN. This is Adam Betts from Family Golf and Learning Center, located in Kirkwood. Our motto is play your best golf. We have the best instruction for every skill level. Two female instructors, along with our eight PGA instructors. We're there for the kids and the adults who are starting to play and trying to refine their game. Family Golf and Learning Center features a double-decker driving range, grass tees, and a short game area, along with indoor simulators and a performance center. That's not all. Don't forget about our back nine, Bar and Grill. Find out how we can help you and your family. Head to FamilyGolfOnline.com. That's FamilyGolfOnline.com. It's Family Golf and Learning Center, where we make St. Louis better at golf. I'm delighted to welcome the Amateur Players Tour to the Golf with Jay Delsing show. The APT team has worked so hard to establish a national golf tour for amateurs. Folks, don't miss out on this opportunity. If you love golf and ever wondered what all the fuss about tournament golf is, then this tour is for you. We just released the 2024 schedule and it is a beast. There's 21 events currently in the metropolitan St. Louis area with many more to come. But check out these golf courses. Paynes Valley, Ozark National, Stone Wolf, Ambrier, Persimmon Woods, Gateway National, and a 36-hole event on Norwood's West Course, and many more. Okay, so the courses are certainly cool and nice, but what's really neat is the way the events are run and how they are run. The APT team does a fantastic job of closely monitoring handicaps and ensuring a good and fair competition. There are five divisions, a year-long points competition, major championships, elevated events, and much, much more. Right now, there are over 6,000 members in 41 different local chapters across the country. And all that's happened in just over five years. Join now and don't miss out on the best tournament golf in the country. Run for amateurs by amateurs themselves. Go to amateurplayerstour.com. That's amateurplayerstour.com. 
For the best in Italian cuisine in St. Louis, look no further than Paul Mano's, located in Chesterfield. It's traditional Italian cooking, and their best ingredient? It's their tradition. It's cooking like Paul's grandmother used to make and like his mother still prepares today. There are no corners cut at Paul Mano's. From greeting you at the door to the pasta you'll share with your family, Paul Mano's is committed to bringing you their very best anytime you share a meal at their place. It's Paul Mano's located in Chesterfield. Do you remember the golden rule? I'm sure you do, but just in case it goes like this. Treat people the way that you'd like to be treated. At People's National Bank, that one statement is the cornerstone of what this bank is all about. Locally owned, with 23 locations in Southern Illinois and the metropolitan St. Louis area, People's National Bank parlays a robust menu of commercial or personal banking services you could possibly need with a friendly yet hardworking Midwestern attitude. Maybe you just want to do business with a bank whose entire team lives in the same neighborhoods as we do. If you're like me and doing business with someone you trust is important to you, then People's National Bank is the bank for you. Jason Rantham, local president, is here for you to call and he'll answer any questions you may have. His personal cell is 314-974-2243. You can also find us online at peoplesnationalbank.com. People's National Bank is here for all of your banking needs. Hey, Jay Delsing here, and I know I speak for all of we golfers. We're always looking to try to improve our game. For me, that means I go to one place, and that one place is Pro-Am Golf in Brentwood. Tom DeGrand opened his family business in 1975 with a goal of providing St. Louis with the finest in golf equipment, instruction, and technology. Whether you need a new rangefinder, your first set of clubs, or anything else you can think of, Pro-Am Golf has just what you're looking for. If you're a scratch handicap or you carry a 20 handicap, come visit Pro-Am Golf and inquire about a lesson from Tom DeGram. He's been fixing golf swings and making St. Louis better at golf for over 40 years. Go get your gear, lessons, or anything golf-related where I go. And that's Pro-Am Golf in Brentwood. You can also visit them online at Pro-Am Golf USA. That's ProAmGolfUSA.com. It's Pro-Am Golf. Proud sponsor of the Golf with Jay Delson Show.